Cyber attacks are ramping up at electric vehicle charging stations. Now this is not a myth because you may not believe that cybersecurity is a problem with the auto industry. It's more than you realize. As cyber attacks ramp up, electric vehicles are very vulnerable. You'd be stunned to hear about how many cyber attacks the auto industry has fended off every single day. Some that doesn't get talked about much in the news, but we're gonna talk about it. Mandates for electric vehicle sales have raised concerns over the poorly defended charging stations and the possibility of hacks of wider power grids. Europe and the United States push to ramp up the development and sales of electric vehicles, and researchers are concerned that cybersecurity is being neglected. Recent attacks could come in through charging networks, and this is very concerning, not just at the charging station, but on the grid in itself. In the worst case scenario, hackers could engineer blackouts to damage the entire electric grid by infiltrating charging stations and networks. Officials and security analysts have warned this for years, but how does this affect your vehicle while you're charging? Cybersecurity firm Upstream said there were 295 cybersecurity incidences in the automotive mobility space in 2023. They stated that the risk is that unlike a data leak or a bricked phone or a laptop or even minor car hack can be hugely disruptive to people's lives. Britain's Royal United Services Institute think tank said that the proliferation of EV charging stations and related devices being connected to the grid is widening that attack surface and therefore there are more attacks. According to the Israeli-based upstream firm, from 2019 to 2023, disclosed cybersecurity incidences in the automobile and mobility spaces has increased by more than 50%. That's quite a bit of an occurrence in just 2023 alone. Some 64% of the attacks were executed by bad hat actors with bad intentions, the report stated. And 65% of the deep and dark web cyber activities last year had the potential of impact thousands and millions of mobility assets, and that means charging stations. Last week, we discussed the data collection and the connectivity of our vehicle. And as our cars have more software and computer processes, we open our vehicles up to more cyber hacking. For EVs, the connected car charging network is a target. In a dramatic example of that, in February 21st, the Telegraph newspaper reported that the Office of Product Safety and Standards in Britain told Wallbox, which is a brand of charger that we also have here in the US, that its internet-connected copper SBEV home charger was not properly secured against hackers and couldn't be sold. Now, according to the newspaper, critics say they continued the sales of the charger, which risked letting hostile nations disrupt the UK's critical national infrastructure. Close to 40,000 of these chargers have been sold in Britain and at a cost of about $631. Reportedly, updated copper SBEV chargers can still be sold up to June 30th, but the company has stopped marketing the device. Wallbox says that the charger is not available in the U.S., although those of you around the world probably want to know about this. This story highlights the cybersecurity vulnerabilities are not always localized to computers and software, but can also be to car chargers. In 2021, the Ukrainian hackers broke into Russia's biggest EV charging network and claimed to have stole 900 gigabytes of data from it. But there is more on a larger scale. Last year, the National Institute of Standards and Technology created guidance that called on companies deploying fast chargers to secure their digital payment systems. The government's report said that in 2023, the U.S. had more than 48,000 public charging stations, and they connect and communicate with cloud providers and third-party vendors for electric vehicle charging station location information, billing, and other services. And these are located just across the U.S. The big vulnerability in the utilities that provides the power is a big problem, and that interface between the electric vehicle and the charging station via cloud presents a potential attack surface for malicious actors to cause damage. Now, that's a vulnerability along with utilities across the entire country that provide power to us. And the interface between electric vehicles and the charging station via cloud presents a potential attack surface for malicious actors to cause damage. And the cyber attacks are not just theoretical. Each of these systems represents a set of interconnected attack vectors. EVs, for example, interface with the dealership, with mobile phones, navigation, mapping, telemetry, entertainment, vehicle-based web browsers, and other vehicle driver assistance systems such as safety features and over-the-air software updates, and a lot more. These and other warnings led automakers to band together. An attack on one of us is an attack on all of us, said the Automotive Information Sharing and Analyst Center. What we do know is that such cracks could conceivably permit hackers to access vehicle data, consumer credit card information, and allowing hackers to stop and start charging systems at will. And that could leave frustrated drivers without a full battery when they need one, 
but its cumulative impacts could be much more devastating. Many home users leave their cars connected to chargers even if they aren't drawing power. They might, for example, plug in after work and schedule the vehicle to charge overnight when the prices are lower. And if a hacker were to switch thousands or millions of chargers on and off simultaneously, it could destabilize or even bring down the entire electric network. And that would be a big problem. If you think this can't happen, well, it already has in the United States. Here's a glimpse of that attack, which was in 2021 when hackers hijacked the Colonial Pipeline and disrupted gasoline supplies nationwide. The attack ended once the company paid millions of dollars in ransom fees. I'm not fear-mongering. This is real. Make your passwords more difficult, change them often, and when done charging your car, disconnect your vehicle from the charging network, whether it be at home or wherever you're located. There is more of this coming and we will keep you posted. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be happy to get involved in the conversation. You can support me by buying me a cup of coffee or just stay a little bit longer and find another way to save some money on your cell phone plan. Links for our website, social media, and the book and the podcast are all down in the description. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching. Have you ever thought, why in the world is my wireless bill so darn high? What are we paying all this money for? Speed, coverage, data, access to 5G, unlimited talk and text, mobile hotspots? We are partnering with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers all of these features for as low as $15 per month. They're reimagining the wireless shopping experience and made it easy and online. No stores, no salespeople, just huge direct to you savings. Why should you pay more when you have access to premium wireless? Mint Mobile runs on the nation's largest 5G network. Whether you use your phone to watch YouTube, listen to podcasts or play games, you get the same speed and performance as the big guys while connecting to Mint's network. How hard is it to switch your service? Big Wireless wants you to think it's hard, but switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to digital e-SIM cards, which most phones now have, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. And if your phone doesn't have an e-SIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. Just go to trymintmobile.com slash Lauren Fix, also linked in the description down below, to get premium wireless for $15 a month.